All right, my fine friends, welcome back to another Koenji Sean Reviews, the manga show, episode number 13. Yes, a full episode, finally. Uh, the last couple have been Akira-based bonus episodes, but I am back again, and this time with a whole bunch of stuff. We got a limited edition Junji Ito box set. We got some manga haul stuff. We got some clips from Tokyo Comic Con. All kinds of stuff in this vis video, but first... I got to show you this because today is December 22nd, 2022. This is Morning Magazine. It came out this morning. This is the, I mean, the actual issue date is 2023, 4, and 5. But uh, the good buddy Juan Alboran is a mangaka for Morning and publishes Mataki Gunner in Morning. And I had the opportunity to meet up with him this year while he was visiting Japan. You know, finally the COVID restrictions were lifted and tourists and people for business are able to get back over here into Japan. And uh, this is his first Tonkobon that was released off of the Matagi Gunner series released in the morning uh, manga magazine and volume two should be coming out here very soon. I strongly recommend picking it up. Um, also, let's see, we got to meet, um, also, uh, you can buy this, you can buy this on Amazon Japan, so worldwide, I think, so get over to Amazon Japan and check it out, it is fun, and it's awesome to support one, and it's awesome to support Morning, who is supporting one, and vice versa, and it's fun. It's a fun manga. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, but we ha our main protagonist, he uh, is a gamer. And it goes from there. And again, I'm not going to give anything away. Go over to Amazon Japan, pick it up. But check this out. I, I feel so honored. So, Mataki Gunner. And right as you open it up, we have Wanwa. Nanishini Nihone. Why did Juan come to Japan? And he got to do this little four page comic about his trip over here to Japan last year. Amazing. It's got some good jokes in here. I bet you this is fun to do. This is uh, some of the editorial staff from Morning. A couple jokes. Hasta la vista, baby. Of course, Juan speaks Spanish. And then he was kind enough to mention me in here. Look at that. Because when we met up, we met up over at Nakano Broadway. We did some manga hunting. After that, we made a trip over to Jimbo Cho, the used book section of Tokyo, to do some more manga hunting. You know, cruised around a little bit. It was a good time. You know, it's, it's great. I think that he's doing a lot of art. As a Japanese, a, a manga called working for a Japanese company, you have lots of deadlines, especially when you're serialized like he is. And uh, there's one of my favorite shirts. <laughs> and uh, me, I'm very busy slanging books over at Japan Book Hunter. So, and, you know, making videos and stuff when I have a chance. So both of us don't get a chance to mix it up with people all that much. But when we do... It is fun. And he's talking about his amazement when visiting Mandarake. And uh, then we get into the newest installment of Mataki Gana. So I don't think I need to be giving any of this away. But maybe I'll just do a quick flip. Give you some idea. And thank you very much, Juan, for that. I feel like I've been immortalized in manga. Very honored. All right, let's move on with the show. Wait, I forgot that the whole purpose of the short in Morning was to promote the release of the new volume two of Matagi Gana. I am dumb. Thank you, Juan, for pointing that out when we were in our little chat. Um, I was so excited to go pick up the Morning issue that I totally didn't even look at the manga section. But here we are. Exciting stuff. I can't wait to read this over the holidays. 
And I'm not going to flip through too much because I don't want to ruin it for myself. But it's going to be a fun one. And again, go over to Amazon Japan, Amazon.jp, and pick yourself up uh, Tonka Bones Volume 1 and Volume 2 now. Well, here we have a box, clearly. I very carefully cut the tape open on this box, but I have not looked inside this box yet. This box came in another box. And this is why. This is the new Junji Ito Premium Box Set. It includes a t-shirt. It includes seven reproduction genga or panels, like mini ones, as it says. And it includes the full set of the Junji Ito collection, horror collection, um, with limited edition covers. Uh, I had to pre-order this. I received it some time ago. I received it at the beginning, oh, I don't know, I would like to say like December 7th or 8th, but I have been so busy slanging books before the holiday rush. I never worked retail before. I didn't know about this holiday rush shit, man. It's wild. But uh, finally, I get to dig into this with you. So let's open it up and take a look. Box is in pretty good condition. I'm a little bit bummed about this ding here, but what can you do? Because that's not the box that's important. This is the box that's important. Beautiful, right? God, I had seen pictures of this, and I was like, you know what? Merry Christmas to me. I've been working hard. I deserve it. So hang on, I'm gonna carefully get this out. We don't wanna bang it up at all. So before I open it, let's just take a look at the box. I like the foil. Of course, Tomie, Bucci. Yeah, amazing. Even the bottom. Ooh, Soichi. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. I am stoked. That was heavy. Winded already. Ooh, and look at that as you open it. That's what you get to see. Dang, homie. Junji Ito Premium Box is what it says. And if you've read Yon Mu by Junji Ito, then you know he loves the kitty cats. So there's our t-shirt. This one is a large. I don't recall even choosing the size. Personally, I wear a medium. But you know what? I'm not going to fucking wear this. Do you think I am a psycho? Jeez. And we have the alternate covers. So I actually... One sec. I have this complete set, but just to look at seven and eight, I just grabbed a couple random ones. You can see that they are a little bit different. So we'll do a little comparison here of these covers. I like how they give you enough room to actually take them out so you're not pulling on the box. And there we have Tomie, amazing. This is Tomie 1. God, I'm trying to be so careful with them. Here is Tomie 2. Amazing. I've been saying amazing so much lately, but I gotta tell you, 2022 has been amazing. I've been having the it's like one of the best years of my life, dudes. 
And a lot of that is thanks to you out there. All the support is humbling. Yeah, the covers are amazing. Shibito no karawazurai. I should have done a side by side with all the volumes, but we're getting here. We're getting close to seven. God, these are crispy too. When was the original set released? I want to say 2012 or something like that. 2013. Maybe Tomie 1 was 2012. I could be right. Can't remember birthdays, but I can remember manga dates. I'll show those in a moment. All right, there we have seven and seven. So you get the full picture, no print there. Full artwork, again, no print, no need, no barcodes, jamming things up, no obis, the obi wrap. Just straight up manga, my friends. And likewise with number eight. No Obi. We still have Asahi Shimbun Shupan, the Asahi newspaper publishing. Even when I bought my Ito Junji artwork, print, limited edition signed print. Um, it was delivered by Asahi. They manage all of his publications exclusively. I think they manage all of his content in general exclusively. Amazing. Frankenstein. Kaidan. And we can see as well, here are the little mini Genga. Let's open these up nice and carefully. Put my grubby hands on them. Yeah. Nice. Some Tomie. These are rad. If I was a bad person, I'd be photocopying these. I like the, you know, the, he's been pushing hard because the Junji Ito animation series on Netflix was really, is being released. Sorry. I happen to have uh, seen it. Um, is being released. I, I can't say, did I say seen it? I happen to know a lot about it. <laughs> da, 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 I retract my statement. <laughs> but I am not a liar. These are amazing. And then we have the inside of the box here, which is insane. Oh, shit. It's a big box. Sorry about that. Make y'all dizzy out there. Slug Girl, Bucci, Soichi. All of your favorites, my friends. Rad. So, Merry fucking Christmas to me. And that, my fine friends, is Junji Ito Premium Box. I can't wait to dig into these. You know, I need to revisit some of these stories. Um, there's actually a couple of these that I haven't read. I honestly, I haven't read Frankenstein yet. 
Um, read most of them, most everything, but uh, I'm looking forward to flipping through these a little bit. I want to do a little bit of comparison. I want to see if they have anything different as far as splash pages go. That would be rad to compare. But for now, and until I have time to do that, my fine friends, that was Junji Ito Premium Box. All right, I am over here at Tokyo Comic Con 2022, and this is the first year I've attended Comic Con. Um, I go to other events that are more manga heavy, but of course, Comic Con is pretty DC Marvel heavy, and I am the manga dude, right? So, of course, I'm hitting up manga events, um, art auctions, stuff like that a little bit more often, but I had to come because, uh, first of all, Peach Momoko. Right here, Peach Momoko and Yo, her partner and manager, had a booth set up and I got some stuff from her. I will be showing at the end of the video what I picked up while at Tokyo Comic Con. You can see it's not as wild and crazy as it gets at New York or San Diego or something like that. The lines are very manageable. Um, Peach was busy all day or all morning. She signed from, I think when they opened was 10 o'clock and then she signed stuff and did... Uh, redraws on covers and sold sign posters and stuff until about one um this is miyako kojima's booth i got a chat with her a long time and i got something signed by her so rad i i just love nikko chan all of her shoujo horror um i'll show you later what i got while over there uh just kind of cruising around here that's why i have it double speed we don't need to watch you, you get the picture i just figured i'd do a little walkthrough for you all while I was here. Lots of good cosplay. There's an Ant-Man. There's all kinds of wild cosplay. Uh, I did get some videos of some stuff that I don't personally sell or collect, such as uh, some, some figures and some other stuff. But yeah, like I said, I'll show you later on what I picked up while I was here. Um, It's cool seeing some of the kids walking around with their parents all in cosplay and stuff. R2-D2! Uh, my fam is uh, big into the Star Wars. All Star Wars stuff. Old and new. We watch it all. And kids love it. And there's lots of Star Wars cosplay going down. I think I just took a shot of Ant-Man's butt. Um, this is, oh, that was the food, the food court outside. Sick. Cousin It looks hot. I mean, like temperature hot. This is in super fast motion because <laughs> they had this transformer car, but it took like five minutes for it to close. So I just kind of sped up the end process here, but it was dope and all, but it was some corporate, corporate thing. You got to get a shot of the DeLorean while you're here. They had lots of cars. I mean, I'm into the, I'm into movies. I like movies a lot. I have a pretty solid VHS tape collection going on right now that I've been watching during my lunch breaks here at the office. And uh, I will be posting some of those VHS soon. I am slowly building up an arsenal. The, the It was mostly Marvel and DC figures, but I did get some shots of the cool Japanese stuff, like this Berserk Guts. Figure? Model? Tch. Little hook to little can. Little fist of the North Star. And those prices, man, like a thousand bucks. Some are really expensive. Raul. You know, there's... I wish that I had a bigger Japanese office and I would get something like really dope like this to display. That one's not even for sale. Probably from someone's collection. Some sack, some ghost in the shell. I've been digging some ghost in the shell stuff recently. I'm gonna be, 
I'm gonna be posting some stuff, but that's almost two grand, dude. Some Eva. My brother loves Eva. He would be stoked. And of course, you know I'm going to get to that Ultraman. Tokusatsu forever, baby. I like Shin Ultraman. I like the new movie. I mean, it drug on in parts, but it's like you can't just have kaiju the whole time. How, how would they have the budget for that on Netflix, you know? A little battle angel. Um, the Dodo A Dodo is sick. The detail is so sick. So fun. But yeah, I just have no space for something as dope as this. And I'm clumsy. In a tight office, I'd break that shit. Zod. Sick. I need to get back on Berserk. Love flipping through the artwork of Berserk. The Art of Berserk uh, art book that I have. Sick. Just need more time to read, my friends. Hang tight just a little bit here, and then we'll get into my haul from the con. Yeah, I know it's not manga, but it's Vampirella, my friends. And that, my fine friends, was Tokyo Comic Con 2022. And I'm sure I'll be back next year. Shout out to Peach Momoko for all the gear. I got some of these too. All right, let's see what I got. Domo. All right, now let's take a look at what I picked up while I was at Tokyo Comic Con 2022. Um, it was an amazing event. Uh, one thing I strongly recommend is not going to Tokyo Comic Con when it's your birthday week because you will overspend and buy too much stuff, which is exactly what I did and what I always do. And next week is Comic Cat here in Tokyo, and I'm going to be over there and I'm going to be like, hey, it's the holiday season, it's Nenmatsu, the Japanese year end, might as well go blow some money. But um, first of all, a shout out to Ed Piscor, cartoonist kayfabe. Um, Jim Rugg did not come over, but Ed came over with Jeff Darrow. And Brian Moss, it was awesome linking up with those guys. I got to take them manga hunting a few times here in Tokyo. We hit some Nakano Broadway. We hit Jimbocho. Um, a couple of us, uh, Brian and Ed and I, hit uh, Shimo Kitazawa. Um, we cruised around, did a lot of manga hunting. And uh, I picked up some books for Jeff and for Ed that they'd been looking for. And in return, they gave me these awesome prints while I was down at... Comic-Con, thank you for the signature. Of course, this is from Hip Hop Family Tree, which I would show you the copy that Ed gave me, but it's actually at my house because I'm actually fucking reading it right now. So uh, that's one on my, that was one on my bucket list to get to. And this too, amazing. I love the paper. I love the print quality. And again, thanks guys. It was a true honor. I know a lot of the, I know a lot of them spend their time in the studio making art. I spend my time in the studio slinging books. Japanbookhunter.com and on Instagram. And uh, you know, so getting out, mixing it up, being able to talk all things manga for a couple days was amazing. Amazing experience for me. Um, Jeff asked me to take whatever I wanted. I took two prints maybe he had 10 up of the most vile grotesque and amazing stuff that he had uh you know what i didn't clarify my name spelling but i don't really give a shit thanks brother it was amazing 
Keep drinking. I'm going to say amazing again. I'm telling you. Yeah. So I got those. Sticking with the prints. Peach Momoko was there with Yo. Her partner and manager. And I hit her booth a couple times, of course. Uh, big shout out to my homie David, who came through in the clutch with a Daredevil Marvel issue for me. But they were selling prints. These I got two of these signed out of 60. Nice. Um, unlike a lot of, the, like, when I see pictures of San Diego or New York Comic Con, the lines, the lines are insane, insane lines. So Peach Moico had a steady line, you know, like five, six people, but it was constant the whole time that she was uh, signing and doing redraws and, like, quick commission stuff. And, uh, yeah, it was really easy to access the artist's all artists and it was really easy to communicate with them so that was an excellent experience as well um i should have done this video you know weeks ago but you still get it and i got two of those sticking with peach momoko i also got A redraw on this Daredevil cover. My awesome buddy and ex-co-worker, in fact, happened to have an extra one of these around. And we met up at Comic-Con and he hooked it up, which was amazing. I'm not selling this, by the way. I'll sell one of each print, but I'm going to frame the other two. Hang them up here in the studio. Sorry, it's it's too nice to leave. I mean, I you know you want it out. You want all my books. All my books are accessible, not slabbed up. But it's a peach momoko redraw. Come on. Or as we say in Japanese, remock. And more peach momoko. I got this eye girl designed by her. Sick. And they threw in a little vinyl, little vinyl card, as they call them, here. And more Peach Moko. Check that out. Isn't that sick? Let's take it out. Look at this color. I am not going to take this one out quite yet. I'm not too sure. You know, I really bought this for myself. And this I might resell in the future. Amazing. Like the claw. Claw is sick. The gi is sick. The eyeballs on the back of the head are sick. I'm not a big toy collector, but anything manga or comic book adjacent, especially, of course, I'm a manga dude, um, I will grab. And... I got a mini Peach Momoko original drawing because I bought these. And I'm not going to say what I bought them for because they were fucking expensive. But uh, this quick little looks like a Fure brush sketch. You can see the, the lines. Very, very basic sketch in the background. And then signed and dated. So that is amazing. Drink. This is just the packet you get from the event. I'm not going to go through this Comic-Con. I'm not so familiar with Kazumasa Uchio, but I was going by his booth. Older gentleman does fantasy art. And I was like, that is amazing dragon stuff. And I love me some weird, wild fantasy. I mean, I grew up on Heavy Metal magazine, so 
It was like heavy metal, mad, and then all the Zap comic stuff. That's what I grew up on. The detail is just crazy. So I, I grabbed those. I, you know, more to support the artists because older gentlemen had a booth there. There's a couple people, but you know, sometimes the, the foreigners that are at the Comic-Con seem a little bit standoffish to go up because of the language barrier, but there's a couple people milling about and I was like, yeah, I gotta, gotta go up and support rad artists. Um, Miyako Kojima was there. I'm a huge fan of her shoujo horror manga, especially uh, Nikuko-chan, of course, and then she's done numerous other things as well. I have a almost every Tonko Bone that she's released in my collection. I think there's a couple rare ones, and this one is very rare. This is uh, Junsei or Jun Nama Kido, and her, this was her first Tonko Bone, which was gag manga, and it's amazing. I've done a little review on my Patreon, Koenji Shan Reviews on Patreon, $1 a month, get my whole library of 70 some odd videos of the wildest stuff from my collection of, I don't know, 4,000 manga by now, something like that. And there's... Kojima, Miyako Kojima, and she signed it for me. Amazing. And uh, be on the lookout because Starfruit Books out of America is going to be publishing some of her works in English 2023. Support independent publishers, Starfruit Books, and support artists like Miyako Kojima. Love her stuff. It's amazing. And of course, to support artists, you buy their stuff. So I got a couple signed prints. I have a, there was a pop-up at Tokyo Hands in Shibuya at the beginning of 2022 that I went to where I got a signed framed uh, print of hers that's different from these, but it's up in my reading room, my loft up there. And more Miyako Kojima. You are amazing. I can't wait to see your English releases. Um, my neighbor... Sean Ellis, who lives here in Koenji, he's awesome. And uh, he also does, he's a writer for Dose. And he also had a booth over at Tokyo Comic Con. So, uh, Dose, someone's calling me in the background. Sorry about that. Uh, they're just going to have to deal with it. Because I'm in the middle of making a video about Tokyo Comic Con 2022. And his buddy Dick Gabia, who's the artist, they put out four vol issues of Dose. And it's it's a fun one. Um, I got mine over at a pop-up event at a bar, a friend's bar called uh, uh, Sub Pop here in Koenji. Um, we had a party, a bunch of friends were there and stuff. But uh, he also had a booth at Tokyo Comic Con, so it was great to see them moving forward. Hooked me up with a nice sticker. Brad, keep it going, Sean. You are the man. More flyers from the show. And finally, I am an art junkie fan. I love his... And also, I collect Maniki Neko um, anything. Basically, I have like a little shelf over here in my office. And he had one of these left. He was so nice. We kind of talked. I've been following him on Instagram for years. Um, talked to Maniki Comcat. Talked a little bit about our lives and stuff. There wasn't a big line. Someone else came up and bought the last one of these that was open, and I got the last package one. Uh, it was a very, very nice guy. Shinichiro Kato. And uh, he was kind enough to draw a little picture and sign it for me. And that, my fine friends, is what I picked up while I was at Tokyo Comic Con this year. Well, since we looked at the Junji Ito premium box, we might as well look at this. This is Ark Devilman limited box. And I've had an eye, my eye on this. Of course, I'm a huge Go and a Guy collector. And I've had my eye on this for a long time. They're not really that rare, but it's, I hadn't seen one in such pristine condition for 
uh, well, since I've been looking. So I decided to grab this one and we can see what's in here. Arc, including seven items. One video cassette. I just got a TV VHS combo because I bought a bunch of VHSs, rare VHSs recently, and I need to check them before I sell them. And because I bought it, the VHS TV combo, I mean, I've been watching a lot of old 90s anime, old 70s Nikatsu, like Yakuza movies, like all kinds of stuff I've been picking up. But I do have a VHS player now, so I can watch that. Nine trading cards, five comics, totaling 218 pages, 20 illustrations, 18 drawings, one figure, and two posters. This is really big and heavy, so I have to, and the way it opens is like this, so I have to put it on the ground. One sec. It looks like this. Messing up the table a bit, but what can you do, homies? All right, this one's number 2,444. I don't know how many they did. They did 10,000 or 9,000. There's a zero here, so I'm assuming they probably did 10 plus. Um, I'm a big fan of Devil Man. Actually, my first tattoos were the Devil Man wings, the lines that come out where his wings come out of when I was 18 years old. That's how much of a Devil Man fan I am. So, of course, I like the original uh, old 70s version, the old the 90s anime, early 90s. This is Dev Devil Man original video animation produced by Gona Guy. So I'll check that out. I don't know how to take this stuff out. Yeah, let's do it like this. This must be the two posters, which I am not going to take out yet, because once I get them out of this plastic, they'll never come out again. But, you know, if you want to see the posters, just Google Devilman Ark posters. I'm sure they'll come up. Yeah, what's, what, how, do, how does this work here? Ooh. I haven't looked in here yet. I peeked, but I didn't take anything out yet. There's our... Orient Hero Series. Go Nagai Original Devilman Action Figure. Oh, uh, these are the, the trading cards, I guess. Illustrated by Hitoshi Iwaaki. Oh, the first one is Katsuya Terera. I'm a big Terera collector. You know, he's always with Rock and Jelly Bean and Soriyama at their, you know, every two years or so they put out a book. Mahiro Maeda. Like that. Foil. Jun Tsukasa. Go Nagai. Tatsuya Egawa. Hiroyuki Asara. Shoyu Tajima. Oh, Kenji Tsuruta. Eminon. Of course, Spirited Away. I'm a big uh, Tsuruta collector as well. And there we are back to Terada. Whew, that was exciting. All right, let's see what else we got in here. This is just a box separator. All right, I think that we're gonna have to take this box off the table make room for this 20 devil men illustrations and 18 reprinted editions of original drawing or reproduction genga all right 
I should practice this once before I do these videos, but I like to be surprised too, my friends. Man, these are cool. All right, these are the Genga. Amazing. Of course, these are not originals. These are repros, but I like how you could see like the white out page. It's all in the details, my friends. Ooh, nice. From Devilman 5. And it says Maki, so I'm imagining from Volume 5. Look at all those lines. Daichi ga unari yama wa hime o agete kuzurita. I like how it's not just Devilman and other characters from Devilman, but like a lot of just like examples of his brushwork. Those are cool. Yes, it goes like this because we have the number nine up there. Then we have Devil Man. Man, there's a lot of these. Akira. I feel like I shouldn't uh, make this segment too long because there's still so much to look through here. This is a huge box set. I think I'm going to try to track down another one of these. A nice, clean one like this. I mean, it's heavy. I know that if you want one, or if somebody wants one, the, and that's the ending of Devilman, then uh, shipping is a bitch. But, gosh, man, like... There's some cool stuff in here. Like that. 1998... course dynamic pro these are all the illustrations oh hoo, hoo, hoo. Tsurita Kenji. I think I need to do it like this so that I could tell you who is what is there any sort of order to it this is Asara. I wish it said on the front, but it's kind of better that it doesn't because then, you know, it's a surprise. Asari Yoshito. They're not in any discernible order. Very confusing. Oh, 
It's really cool though. Umanosuke. I need to be looking a little bit better at these. West Bend Skota. Wow. It's wild. Oshima Hiroyuki. I know I'm going to miss one of these names at some point, so forgive me when I do. This is uh, Naoki Karazawa, maybe? Some kanji are hard to read, people. I'm trying to refer to this while I'm doing this, and I'm not even paying attention to, to what I'm uh, what I'm doing with the camera. Sato. Tajima. Wild. 90s computer stuff was wild. Tate Ishi. Oh, that looks cool. Looks like it could be, you know, like a Marvel cover. Tsukasa. Suruta Kenji. Very happy for that. Yeah, I think I just got to get through these people. Tony Takizaki. And there we go. Oh, that's rad. Try to credit everyone, but mm, can't really do it all. Oh, that's pretty cool looking. Hoto Hiroshi. Looks like it's all raised and then you make a a print with it. Oh, I might as well try to read the last one. Maida. And there's some explanations on the artists, I'm guessing. Oh, there's a couple more in here. And Back to the arc page. Jeez, that's a lot of stuff. Here, let me do this. I don't wanna, I don't wanna mess it up. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know how I'm gonna manage this, but yeah, this is a red. Thing with box sets, I mean, I love them and I have lots of box sets. Thing with them though, is sometimes you put everything in the box and then you never open the goddamn box again. This is the bag from probably the event where they held the art show. And here is a Ziploc bag missing the zip. Oh, it's too warped to even zip it, even if it had a zip. A couple flyers in here. These are event flyers. There's a woo, flyer for Kenji Tsuruta. Nice. Some more flyers. And Neo Devilman. Katsuya Terada. Love him. Love his stuff. Hitoshi Iwaaki. Devilman in the gar Dark, Go Nagai. Great. Yeah, look at that. It's just classic, classic Go Nagai. 
Neo Devil Man by Kazuko Yumeno. Kawaii. Whoa. And Tatsuya Egawa. Woo. Getting risque. Wild. And that, my fine friends, is 1998 Devilman Arc box set. And I think I'm going to take a break, go up, and check out this VHS. All right, welcome back to another Koenji Sean Reviews. And this, my fine friends, is a bonus episode of me unboxing tons and tons of rare and wild manga and art books. This is something I usually do on Instagram, to be honest, but uh, I do it on Instagram Live. But uh, I'm in Instagram jail right now for posting the Mizuki Shigeru biography of Hitler. For some reason, Instagram does not like factual biographies of awful people. So uh, while I'm in Instagram jail, I figured, hell, I gotta unbox this stuff anyways. I might as well do it for you all. And finally, my Kaze Shinobu collection is complete. This is a Roman mystery. This is, uh, I don't know if this is Ametsuki or Ugetsu Monogatari, the rain moon story. Um, this is the last book I needed to complete my collection of all things. Kaze Shinobu, I found it at Mandarake when I was out there with the homie, the homie, and Jeff Darrow, and Takashi Okazaki, and uh, manga hunting, and it was in the showcase, and I nabbed it up because I've been waiting for this for a long time. I'd seen it online a few times, but I just never pulled the trigger on it, and the price really wasn't to my liking. It's amazing, Kaze. Kaze Shinobu, man. This is like a mystery love story. What do we have over here? Do we have a skull? No, but we have some butterflies. The eyes. The eyes always give Kaze away. He loves that image. So I'll be doing an update of Kaze Shinobu. If you want to know more about him, check out my previous video. I did, I don't know, it was like an hour and 20 minutes of me breaking down everything Kaze Shinobu. But um, I've gotten more and more of his stuff since then, so I need to do an update video at some point. This is Ikegami, Ikegami Ryoichi um, and no Koi. Um, no, Owen no Koi, sorry trying to race so i actually have this in my personal collection already but uh i found it when i was out hunting and it's a beautiful book this will be for sale japanbookhunter.com is where uh i post books that don't sell on instagram but really just go over to japan book hunter on instagram that's where i sell 95 97 now percent of my titles they all get sold on Instagram and to regular customers who make requests or just buy my awesome wild books. So that's some Ikegami. We got a lot here. Um, when I was over at Nakano Broadway hunting, I did a little tradey trade with Ed Piscor. And uh, he hooked me up with a signature there. And, of course, this is Hip Hop Family Tree, the Japanese, the Nihongoban, Japanese version. So I'm stoked to have the Japanese version for one. If you're in Comic-Con, you know, this. Is, I'm going to post this after Comic-Con. Tokyo Comic-Con's tomorrow. I'll be hitting up the booth of Ed and Daryl. All right, what am I doing? I'm, I'm just going too hard in the paint here, guys. I'm mistalking and sounding weird. And uh, let me cover up these addresses. Let's see what else I got. Lots of packages here. Um, continue 
the Devilman Crybaby issue. Awesome. This is a request by a customer. I usually don't buy Continue Magazines, but I'll buy anything Devilman. And what else do we have here? So regular customers get to make requests. And this fine customer requested a bunch of magazines, Devilman magazines. So I'm sure we'll be seeing some more in here. What do we got here? Ooh, Hanakuma Yusaku. He does uh, Heita Uma style, silly wild gag manga. And then Tokyo Zombie, which has been translated into English, I believe. But I think that's the only title of his that's been translated into English. Some gold here. You want to see a hundred and seventy-five dollar book? Yeah, I usually sell these for two hundred, to be honest. But this is for a regular customer that buys a lot of art books from me, and art books are not cheap. And this, of course, is the early works of. Toshio Saeki, Saeki Toshio. I'm not going to take it out of the plastic, but eh, there you go. You can see I get them clean too. Look at how clean that baby is. Woo! This is a beautiful book. This is the third time I've owned this book and always pay an arm and a leg for it. More books, more books, more books. This one. I have to put somewhere nice because it's expensive. All right, what do we have here? I kind of prepped everything. Oh, yeah, same customer wanted the Devilman Brutus issue from 2003, which I promptly tracked down. I looked everywhere on the Japanese inner tubes and I could find only two of those. So I tell you what, I got two. One for me, one for the homie. This is Kyofu or Fear by Umez, the two volume tonko. Um, this is the smaller Tonko version. You know what? You know what? You know what, homies? Let me get some scissors and just open it up really quick and show you one of them. If I may. Because the covers, I mean, there's, I like the original Tonko bones. They're awesome. And, uh, I like the Perfection series, the Umez Perfection versions, which I have. I have the original. I have the Perfection. Then I got these little, um, these are called Bunkos. These are the little small versions, but look at those covers. Aren't those covers sick? And they're light. So somebody who wants some Umez but doesn't want to spend too much on shipping. Could get these via JP Post for probably 10 bucks because they're nice and small. Whereas the Perfection series is a big Perfection edition. And uh, you probably have to use DHL, which up to two kilos is $30, my friends. Up to five kilos is 50. And that's how I ship. And what else we got here? We got some more... Nori Yoshi Orai, Green Universe. This is probably the, these are getting harder and harder to find, but I keep on finding them, man. Just keep on popping up. Of course, Godzilla, Empire Strikes Back. He's done just numerous, numerous movie posters. Steven Seagal, my lord. And this is from the, uh, which ones are these from? 
I was going to say from the covers of SF Adventure Magazine, which he did 91 covers for. Oh, there's some SF Adventure Magazine covers. These are also in The Beauties of Myths, where he shows all of his works around those 91 covers of SF Adventure. It's called SF Adventure. And we're cruising. We're cruising. Lots more. And if you like uh, Noriyoshi Obrai, then there it is. The Beauties and Myths. Amazing book. Just amazing. Um, I've been scooping up so much Orai lately that there's not many more left out there. I am going a million miles an hour because it's Thursday, it's Thanksgiving, I'm at the office working, and I'm about to go home and eat some Din Din. <sighs> Cheers. But before... I do that. I thought that I would do this little video for all y'all. Plus, you know, I have to get back to people like that I ordered from and say that I got my stuff and you know, I have some booksellers that s send me stuff and yeah, all this stuff was just piled up on the floor being all jama, being all in the way. And when I want something, I get it. And if I want one, I often get two. And here we go. Fact Lily. I love this book. I've been looking for this for a while. By Kato and Goto. Take a look at this poster. And this one is clean, clean. Anything you see on here will eventually end up posted on my Instagram account unless it's a pre-order for a regular customer. So if there's something that you want and you want to beat others to it, hit me up in those DMs, my friends. They've done a lot of books. But I couldn't find this forever. Last year I was looking and looking and looking, you know, I think my friend, and you know, at the shops, I'm always looking for it at the shops, just never run into it at the shops because it's out of print. And I think that the homie over at Japanese avant-garde books kept on buying them up, man, who is a very good friend of mine. So follow on Instagram, Japanese avant-garde books, or go over to their website. Awesome, awesome people. They sell beautiful art books, a lot of photography books, high art books, rare uh, manga um, some pretty spendy stuff, but all of it is worth having. Very rare, very cool books that they are slanging. And, yep, like I said, I saw one, got it, and then I found one with the obi, with the wrap. And I want a wrap on my book. Another fact, Lily. Um... Oh, I got to give a shout out to the homie. To... I have Gothic Knights 1, but of course I don't have access to American comics. So uh, one of my Instagram homies found this in the wild for me and grabbed it and mailed it over to me. We'd do a little tradey trade. And now I have Gothic Knights Two. Yes. What do we have here? It's all a surprise. Ooh, more Devilman. Devilman Crybaby and MDN Design and Graphics 2018 March. I could not find. This was so hard to find. So hard to find. And this isn't the kind of magazine you could just... I mean, they're in shops, obviously, somewhere. But it's not the kind of 
magazine that you're just going to find in a shop. And there was one on, I did so much searching online in Japanese and I could find one, exactly one. Wanted to find more, but unfortunately for me, no. Some, a manga genealogy section. And then dark heroes from films. Yeah. It's a pretty good, pretty good issue. I got you, my man. And we'll keep it going. What do we have here? Oh, there's that other issue of continue. The Devil Man Cry Baby. One for me. One for you. All right. We're not done. We are not done. Want to see a dead body? Nope. That's not a dead body. This is a recommendation from, first of all, I think this is from Cartoonist Kayfabe's channel, basically. So Ed, in 2019, when he was here in Japan, had picked up a few volumes of this, profiled it on Kayfabe, and then one of my customers hit me up saying that he wanted the whole series. This is Pro Wrestling Star Wars. It includes um, Japanese pro wrestlers, fighting American WWF pro wrestlers, 1984. So if you were a kid in 84, then you likely, you know, saw some of these, some of these wrestlers. Of course, the spines are showing all the Japanese wrestlers because, uh, well, I mean, it's Japanese manga, right? But uh, the covers, we get... We get some of the American counterparts. Is that Ric Flair? Woo! Pro Pro Wrestling Star Wars. Hogan. Um, God, I haven't watched wrestling since 1984. Um, God. Demolition? What, 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 what? Dude, dude, dude. Uh, why can't I remember their names? Oh, jeez. But anyways, you get the picture. Some pro wrestling awesomeness. Um, this is actually a request from a customer, so uh, they asked me to try to track these down. So I don't know. I don't think they're going to be for sale unless that customer backs out. But in my experience, people want, people ask, they almost always, I mean, 9 out of 10 times, nine out, maybe 19 out of 20 times, they come through and buy it after I get it. If not, I'll sell it to someone else, man. This Otona <clears throat> Otona na Ishinomori. So this is a little bunko. This is Ishinomori Shotaro. And it's his more adult manga. Not Ero manga. Because, you know, this is old stuff, but it's just more of an adult, adult-themed, you know? Amazing artwork, though, right? And I kind of got this for myself, but the cover is awesome. It has an obi. Not too expensive. Eh. Who knows? Cheers. Moving on, moving on. Oh no, I didn't prep this one. At least it opens easily. Ooh, more. More 
Hanakuma Yusaku. Mika Afuro-kun. See this. Hate the Uma stuff. Fun. Fun. Always fun. Um, this is a uh, Kasumashiro that I got for my own personal collection. Amazing. Amazing. I found this also when I was over at Mandarake with the boys. And I told you I had some Kyofu Umez perfection. And here it is. Kyofu means fear. Umez perfection editions were released 2005 2000 to 2006. Um, check out my last video here on YouTube. I go through a whole bunch of Umez perfection in that and these just are beautiful additions. I mean, everything about them is nicer than the original. The format is larger than the original Tonko Bone. We still going, homies. So, Ed had a request. Ed Pisker had a request for me, which was to find this. This came out and this was serialized in Jump around 1992. I guess... Um, he had gotten, I mean, he talks about this on his show, so on Cartoonist Kayfabe, so I don't think he minds me saying this, but uh, his uh, father had brought him back some jump from Korea, and he saw the Bakudan in it, Bakudan 1 and 2, and he always wanted to have, this is the complete two-volume set, and it is fighting manga. really has that fist of the north star vibe but in a you know fighting format i don't know though let me see the body proportions because you know fists they have those you know long ass legs these outfits what up joey butterfuco Yeah, so I'm looking forward to getting into these. I got these for myself because these are very, very, very hard to find. I was talking with one of the managers of Mandarake, and he's like, yeah, those are only maniacs buy that shit. And, uh, yes, sorry to say it, my brother, but we are maniacs. And here we go with some more Kyofu. Fear by Umez. And this series is the Konbini Ban, or the Convenience Store Editions, right? So they're pretty cheap quality, they're thicker, um, but check out, these covers are amazing. I mean, you could just put these up on the wall, and that right there is worth the money. I mean, look at those. I mean, look at that face. Look at the face in the face. Fucking amazing. These are in excellent condition, too, it looks like. I love it when you get a manga and it's got the original advert insert inside of it. Let's see what was cracking back then. Samurai Blues. Ogenki Clinic. I've been meaning to pick that up, actually. Some Blackjack. Deceiver. Um, Dodoichi. Not much into sports manga, but... I do have some. Sinora Jiro's. And then, of course, Cyborg 009. Yeah, these are like a little... A little glimpse into the past what else we got what else we got i'm stoked today because tomorrow's tokyo comic con i'm off work for the day i'm gonna be chilling gonna roll out there with a homie gonna come back it is um my birthday week which sounds wild at my age that i'm talking about birthday weeks but i have a homie here in koinji and every year we go to an art show or something, they go have some beers 
on my birthday. It's our tradition. And usually some of the other homies will catch up later, but you know, you get so busy in life and it's hard to hang out with the homies. And so, uh, we've kind of just made it our excuse to at least catch up, you know, once we catch up more than once a year, but it really does help us catch up. Yosh, got it. And more umes, more umes. This is Kyofu Gekiga, or the uh, Gekijo, sorry. Kyofu Gekijo, which is like fear stage, I don't know, one and two. Um, or terror setting, terror stage, stage of terror. Why don't we say that? Stage of terror. I like super visual comics format. They usually have great covers like this. And again, look at these covers. Can't go wrong. The uh, Superficial Comics did a good version of Umez's Ultraman. Two volumes, which is rad. I just had it, but I just sold it. And speaking of Umez, Booyaka Booyaka. Bolt, bolt, bolt. The full 24 volumes of Makoto-chan by Umez. We have the full 8 volumes of the original first editions. I don't, actually, I, I, I shouldn't say first editions. I'm going to have to double check that. Of Drifting Classroom. covers no of course boom is we got the tonko bone of god's left hand the devil's right which i don't care for these covers at all but again sometimes someone wants a little bit of a Umez, but they can't really, you know, spend a lot of money. So I like to help those people out. This is a four volume set. The other two are probably right here. There's the other two. Um, then this box. So I bought like just this big collection, big collection. Well, I mean this collection from somebody on an auction. And uh, I won the auction. These are some random Halloween editions that were thrown in. And this is not Umez. I don't know. I'm going to have to look into this. Um, Skada Keiko. Asano Michael. I mean, I don't know. I'm going to have to look into those. They were just kind of like randos that were in the box of horror. And I was buying it for the Umez. And then we have Mira Sensei or Mummy Sensei. Love this cover too. This is an AC Comics edition, which uh, Umez put out a lot of Akita comics. Akita comics. Um, these were, they're not Kumbini Bon. They're not that poor of quality, but they're also not as good of quality as like a regular edition. So the paper is a little bit thin and stuff. But again, you get Mira Sensei or Mummy Teacher in one nice compact light book. Easy to ship, you know, not rare. Not too rare at least. Oh shit, my homies. Here, let me uh, put these down. Whoa. Makoto-chan. I have half of Makoto-chan already, but I got tired of trying to piece it together. And I'm like, I found this big box of stuff online. I'm like, you know what? I'll blow out my set, wrap it all up. Dude, the Drifting Classroom has 11 volumes. I'm a liar. Not eight, 11. Um, yeah, so I wanted to finish out my set and then I'll sell off the remaining you know 
ones, or I'll piece those together over time and sell that as a set. Da, 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 da. Otomo Katsuhiro artwork Kaba. I have my own copy. I have Kaba 2 as well. But dudes, I found this dirt cheap. I mean, it was like... So once in a while, here's, here's a little trick that I use when I'm going on an auction site is I'll put in, of course, I, I search in Japanese because, you know, I'm a Japanese speaker. I work in Japanese, but then I'll put it in in English. Then I'll put it in in a combination of Japanese and English. Then I'll put it in something else. So I think this one I found, usually you see it Otomo Katsuhiro in kanji in Japanese and then Kaba K-A-B-A in English. This one, though, I found Otomo Katsuhiro in Japanese, and then Kaba was in Japanese, not in English how it usually is. And I searched like that, popped up. I got a steal on this. It's got the original plastic cover. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna open it. I'm sorry, I'm not even gonna open it. But there are tricks to the trade, my friends. And that is one tricky, tricky, trick, trick. And finally, finally, this is a special request from a customer. Yoshitoshi, of course, the famous ukiyo-e artist. Oh, look, they say thank you for buying. Here's a free present and some Yoshitoshi postcards are in here. This is from a gallery exhibition I believe was held in 2003. No, 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 2018. I know this was 2018 because I was just looking it up. Um, there's a little echo bag. There's some pins, some tape, the ticket and flyer from the Yoshitoshi Art Show, which was held at the Nerima Art Museum, which is actually right up the road from here. It's not that far at all. Kind of a bitch to get there. You have to bike. The trains, the trains don't really connect over here that way. And of course, I bought it for the art book. And that, my fine friends, is not my haul for the month. Not even close. That is just online sales over online purchases over the last, I don't know, week and a half or something. I bought a lot. I bought a lot. I sell a lot. Go over to Japan Book Hunter on Instagram, japanbookhunter.com. And if you want to see the guts, the insides of the wild stuff in my collection of, who knows, four or 5,000 manga and art books at this point, um, then head over to my Patreon page, Koenji Shan Reviews. One dollar a month and you get my archive of 70 videos of the wild stuff from my collection that I cannot post here on YouTube. And tell you what, I appreciate everyone out there. I feel blessed. I love this job. I love doing this. I love making these videos for you. And until next time, my fine friends, matane.